Bastards and Dragons and Mandalorians, oh my. What a week, man. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here today with another weekly update. And this week, man, there is so much going on. Over the last few weeks have kind of been, hey, here's what I did last week and here's what I'm still doing this week. Uh, there are some changes this week. First, I'm off the medication. You know, the tooth is, uh, it's gone. So I don't feel the pain anymore. It's really weird. Uh, basically, guys, get your wisdom teeth pulled out when you're younger so you don't have problems later in life. Uh, but uh, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about. Books, movies, TV, uh, Peers? Yeah, that's how I'll put it. I I'm going to consider them peers. Uh, but first off, let's talk about what we always talk about first, and that is books, because this is a book channel first and foremost. But, you know, I do have other interests. That's why I like to have these uh, weekly updates and also find out what you guys are into, because that's how I discover new things to do, because apparently I don't have enough. Uh, first up, uh, guys, I did finish The Lies of Locke Lamora. I actually did that review. I'm going to put it right here for you in case you missed it. Um, I'll leave the feedback to that video because I kind of did it in the last video about kind of where I was feeling uh, on this. But uh, I did give uh, in-depth thoughts in that view. And I, I think it's gonna, it's kind of gotten uh, mixed opinions like I thought it would uh, because uh, I had a mixed opinion. <laughs> well, but, uh, but the big thing that I'm doing right now is I think I've told you guys in the past that uh, while I'm reading a anything that's considered epic fantasy or traditional fantasy, anything that's a, a fantasy book that's like about this big, uh, I like to actually counterbalance it either with uh, some horror or some science fiction so yes i started a crown of swords long 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 wait between six months i waited between uh what was it lord of chaos and the crown of swords it's not just because of the whole slog thing uh it, it was really i had enough warning about the slog that i said you know what if i read 14 of these in a row i'm going to get to the point where i start to get a little burnout and I didn't want that because I was really enjoying the ride. Uh, so I thought a good place to stop is right before 7 through 10, which is this slog that everybody talks about so much, right? And, and, and we've been over it in every video. Some people say it's a slog. Some people say it's not. Some people say it's only because of the weight. Some people say it's because it's slow. Some people say it's because of the action. I don't care about all that. I don't care about that. I'm going to read it all, obviously. But I am counterbalancing it with Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. This is really good, guys. Um... I did not expect this. Uh, when uh, the, the, the trilogy ended, and it ended on such a nice note that I did not think there was anywhere else to go. So when I heard he was going to be continuing the series, I decided, I don't know. I don't know. Is, is he going to Brent Weeks it? And what I mean by that, by Brent's week, Brent Weeksing it, and, and, and I hate that because I like Brent Weeks, um, is where you have a trilogy of books and it starts doing better than you expected so you just start throwing stuff together to add on or prolong the series that's not the case here this is definitely a fully fleshed out story it's got a lot of new characters and a lot of old characters and both of these books right now uh early spoiler reviews i am liking both of them so much it's hard for me to decide which one to read so basically i'll read 100 of this 100 pages in this 100 pages in this 100 pages in this uh that's kind of where i'm at right now i'm about uh I'm about 60% through Iron Gold, about almost 40% through uh, A Crown of Swords. Let me talk real fast about A Crown of Swords. If this is what the whole slog is like, I'm going to have no problems going through this because, like I said, I'm on chapter 16 right now, and I'm having a great time. No slogginess to this at all. If it's because, oh yeah, like the first you know half dozen chapters are them walking, okay, you ever read Lord of the Rings? Yeah. I don't got any problems with that. Um, also, the first like six chapters are all Perrin. And if you guys know anything about my, if you've watched any of my Wheel of Time videos, you know that uh, Perrin is my my favorite Wheel of Time character at the moment. Uh, he leads my, my power rankings only because Land disappeared. Uh, yeah, so I was happy. And, uh, and, and now I'm getting into the match stuff. So I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time with it. I like where it's going. Uh, I'll save a lot of this for my, for my actual spoiler review when I actually do the review. But I don't know if it's because... It's been six months, and I feel like I'm seeing friends again for the first time in six months. But I'm loving it. I'm having a great time with it, and I, ho I hope it continues. Uh, if it just stays like this the whole book and just has like the big, crazy third act like all of Jordan's books do, I'm probably going to end up being pretty happy because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it quite a bit. And that, uh, that's very, very encouraging. As far as the other book stuff, 
You know how I always say, oh, I'm not going to start any uh, long fantasy. I'm not going to start any other long series until uh, until I'm done with Wheel of Time. I think I'm going to break that rule. Uh, there is a video that uh, that my buddy Daniel Green, I don't say my buddy, we never met. I'm just going to pretend that we're buddies. Uh, Daniel Green actually did on his booktube channel talking about why you should read the Dresden Files. Now, the Dresden Files is something I've been hearing about from friends for 15, almost 20 years now about why I should read it. And I've always had them. I've had them on th three different e-readers now. When I first got a Nook, you remember those things? A Nook by Barnes & Noble? Then my iPad and now my Kindle. I have all these Dresden Files books. So I've, they've always been on my radar, but I've always felt like, I don't know if I want to start another series that long. But the thing that Daniel said on that channel is something that I kind of preluded to earlier where I said I like to offset stuff. He said that the Dresden Files books are a really good palate cleanser between epic fantasy novels. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You know, I, I believe people have told me that you can read a, a Dresden File book in one or two days. You know, that they're really just light reads, fun, to the point, not super elaborate. I've never really been into urban fantasy. Uh, that's one subgenre of the genre that I've never really gotten into, but I'm definitely open to it. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, when I finish, I guess, Iron Gold, because that would be the, the sci-fi part of it, I'm going to start uh, uh, Stormfront, which is the first Dresden Files book. So if you guys have any positive or negative feedback about Dresden Files, you know, please uh, drop it in the comments. But, you know, try to remember, this, I'm just starting this. No, no spoilers, please. Uh, so I, I'm actually pretty excited because, like I said, this has been on my radar for a while. So I'm really actually quite anxious to start it and as good as iron gold and crown of swords are right now i'm pretty sure i'll be there uh probably i wouldn't be surprised if it was by this weekend or something because uh, i'm gonna finish one of these by then uh you know last night it was like okay i'm gonna read a chapter of iron gold and then i'm gonna read some more crown of swords and i was like okay one more chapter one more chapter one more chapter that's how that's how good things are getting in iron gold uh so again guys if you haven't read the red rising books uh i'll talk about them right here they're really good books. You just got to get past that first book, which I know sounds like a, a, a big ordeal, but it's not. It's not. It's really, it's, 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 it's not a difficult read at all. Now, I don't want to say these are difficult reads whatsoever, but they're very, very good. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I met Pierce Brown. He's a nice guy. I'm saying that because they were good, good books. Let's move on to TV, guys. Disney Plus launch. You know, as far as launches go, uh, other than like the, the, uh, the browsing function kind of being broken, you had to look for everything on a search. I think it's a pretty successful launch because when you think, I remember when WWE Network first came out and, and yeah, I got that when it first came out and it was unusable for like a week and that had less than a million subscribers. Disney Plus has like over 18 million subscribers and I never really had a ton of problems other than, you know, my, my search file. Nothing that I clicked on to play did not work. Everything worked fine. I never had one buffering or, you know, we could not connect or retry or anything like that. One thing I had a problem with on day one was uh, creating different profiles for my kids and uh and uh yeah, yeah like i said just the, just the actual browsing every time you try to browse it'd be like you know retry 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 but you could search for anything and obviously the big thing that i wanted disney plus for look this was my wife's decision i was like we got we got prime video and we got netflix that's it we don't need another streaming service because you know eventually it's gonna be like we're paying for cable again and we cut the cord years ago so that would just be foolish but she kind of overruled me on this one because look my wife was one of those that was into the Disney princesses long, long ago. So she, she wants to watch all of her old Disney features and the animated classics and watch them with the kids and stuff like that. So she overruled me on this one. I was all right, I mean, look, she didn't have to twist my arm very hard, okay? Because, you know, I like a lot of that stuff too. And especially just the amount of content on this thing. You know, that's, since, since they bought Fox, they've got so much. It's got every episode of The Simpsons on there, for God's sake. So you can go back and watch uh, The Simpsons when it was great. Yes, it used to be really great. Uh, if you like it now, it's cool, but you know what? I'm sorry. It, it pales in comparison to those early years. Uh, I liked it before they were cool, you know? Uh, <laughs> all those stuff that people love on, like, Family Guy and South Park. I mean, even South Park even made an episode about how Simpsons did it first, you know? So, um, yeah, definitely go back and watch some of those old seasons if you haven't. Uh, it's got, you know, the old X-Men cartoons, stuff like that. I've been watching that with my kids and stuff. So it's it's a, it's a rabbit hole that you can fall down rather easily. And speaking of, Alice in Wonderland's on there, too. So, I mean, all these old movies that you don't even think about. That, that Disney either owns or distributed back in the day are all back. So it's a really cool nostalgia trip on a lot of this stuff. And there's a lot of other things on there, but obviously the original content, The Mandalorian, Star Wars. Now, people might know by now, if you watch my Star Wars uh, EU stuff, you know I'm disenchanted with what Disney has done to Star Wars. It definitely doesn't feel like my Star Wars. It doesn't feel like it respects George's vision. 
Uh, it's definitely disrespectful to the uh, the established canon that was there before they bought the the IP. And I just I I felt like I just wasn't caring about Star Wars anymore. The only reason I was interested in Mandalorian was because is John Favreau he uh, directed Iron Man. In case you guys don't know this, uh, Jungle Book, The New Lion King. So he you know he's he's pals in Disney. He's 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 definitely under that umbrella. But he's a competent director. And then you had Dave Filoni working on this. And Dave Filoni, if you guys don't know, is he was basically George Lucas's understudy while they were doing the Clone Wars animated series together. And I have said before, I feel like Dave Filoni knows the Star Wars universe better than anybody not named George Lucas. And maybe Timothy Zahn, just because Timothy Zahn's been there longer. And I have been in support of, ever since Lucasfilm was sold, why are we not giving the keys to Dave Filoni? You know, I really feel like he is the future of the company because the content he creates is respectful to the source material. He he knows George's vision. He knows what works and what doesn't work. And he focuses on telling a story. And that is very evident with this first episode. It's only one episode, guys. But Mandalorian was phenomenal. I loved it. it. Everything except the music. The music was atrocious. It sounded like Rocky or something. I don't know. The music was atrocious, but I feel like that's something they can fix. Um... But everything in it, the look, the aesthetic, the practical effects, the set pieces, the action sequences, everything felt Star Wars. And I feel like if you liked Rogue One, you'll probably enjoy this. It feels the most like the original trilogy era Star Wars that Disney has done yet. And a lot of people are saying, oh, are you happy now? Is, is Star Wars safe? No, no, actually it kind of frustrates me more because it, it shows me that they have this ability to make good Star Wars content and they chose not to. Uh, so, yeah, it frustrates me even more. So, uh, does this get me excited to watch Rise of Skywalker? No, this makes me even less interested to watch Rise of Skywalker because I now feel like the future of Star Wars is on television. Uh, no spoilers for that first episode, because I, but I will say you guys need to watch it. You guys need to watch it and see, especially if you're one of the NU new Star Wars fans, uh, watch this and see this is what Star Wars should feel like. It should feel gritty. It should feel like a space western. It should feel like a universe that's lived in. And Everything about this nailed it. There are all the Easter eggs are in there, but they're never in your face. They're not repeating lines or anything like that. They're not nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Remember when you like this? No, but it feels very respectful. It felt like an a, a EU book, like the original EU, the, uh, the Legends back there. It felt like one of those books come to life. And I am super excited to see where it goes now because uh, this episode felt like it was 10 minutes long. That's how good it was. It just flew by. It isn't perfect by a long shot there are still some some story beats where i was kind of like that doesn't feel very much like star wars but as far as this new star wars goes this feels like it belongs and so if uh if rogue one and, and, and the mandalorian were kind of what i got first from disney i'd probably be a lot more optimistic about it than i am now but uh yeah definitely a step in the right direction so uh give dave filoni the keys that's all i'm gonna say uh, me and wife continued the uh, the Expanse rewatch. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I talked about uh, the Expanse a lot in the last weekly update. But just basically, uh, you should watch it. Uh, it's very, very old. But I did a video right here years ago about why you should be watching that TV show. And uh, I was also like almost 100 pounds heavier back then. So, you know, face is going to look weird to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm actually going to start uh, reading the books again. I actually stopped because I felt like the books were spoiling the series for me. And I liked the series so much that I decided I'm going to stop reading the books and, and, and read them after the series. Passed. They're about to do the fourth book in the series on the show here in December. So I'm going to be reading uh, books three and four starting uh, next year. And then I'll eventually do a why you should read the Expanse books because the book's just as good as the show, believe it or not. Um, I did a video for uh, my review for Dr. Sleep. And you can see that here if you missed it. Uh, I will say I'm very saddened that it isn't doing well at the box office. It's I mean, I hate to use the word flop, but uh, yeah, it didn't even finish second. It's opening weekend. It's a shame because it's a really, really fantastic movie for uh, for fans of the book and for fans of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. So, uh, you know, that's just the way things break sometimes. Uh, I think it suffered from the name, uh, not having the brand recognition with the word Shining in it. I mean, I thought that when King released the title of the book back in 2013, I was like, really, Dr. Sleep? That's what you came up with, Steve? So, um, but you know what else? Another Stephen King adaptation that was a flop at the box office was Shawshank Redemption. And, you know, look at the legacy on that. So, yeah, I think that word of mouth and, uh, you know, and watches when this comes on video is probably going to end up helping its legacy. But I hate that it wasn't successful because now I feel like studios are going to be apprehensive to let Mike Flanagan do any other King material and he's the best at it. And it's just a shame. It's just really, really a shame. So, guys, 
can, please go go to the box office and watch Doctor Sleep. It's very, 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 very good. Um, I'm gonna close by talking about uh, what what I brought up earlier about about peers. Uh, I don't know if I'd really say that because I'm still so new at this booktubing thing. But uh, for a couple of years, there were three booktubers that I subscribed to. They were Daniel Green, uh, Elliot Brooks, and uh, Murphy Napier. Those were the three that I watched. And uh, mostly because they read a lot of the things that I read, but also because I, I like their setup. I like their style. I like the way they didn't feel like they were talking down to me. Uh, it was really, really good and helped me decide some things. I mean, I would have never probably read Wheel of Time if it wasn't for Daniel Green's videos on it. Uh, so when I actually got like a couple comments on this channel from Daniel Green, I was like, hey, cool. Wow. How about that? You know, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, he actually has maybe even watched one of them. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but then this morning, uh, Murphy Napier actually subscribed to the channel. So I'm like, wow, you know, this is like the, the best compliment I can get from people that I used to watch that, uh, you know, I've actually come up on, on the radar. That's, that's great. That's really, really cool. I can only hope to one day have not only the kind of support they have, but be able to put out the kind of content that they put out. Uh, they, I mean, I, I watch a lot of their stuff and think, you know, hey, I wish I could do that in my videos and stuff like that. What I wanted to do, make mine a little different, is I want to make mine focused on, you know, discussion in the comments. That's why I, res I respond to just, as far as I know, I respond to every comment. If I miss one or two, I I'm sorry. Sometimes YouTube will filter stuff that it considers spam. I don't know why. And I'll have to go in and check and see, hey, that's someone that commented like a month ago and I didn't even see it. And it's definitely not spam. Uh, so if I ever don't reply to you, no, it's definitely not intentional. I, my, my goal on this channel is to reply to each and every one of you. Uh, so that's why I, how I try to differentiate myself. But still, uh, to to like I said, to even get the recognition uh, of folks like that that uh, that you know inspired me to start this channel is really really cool. Uh, I'm 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 waiting on a comment from you, Elliot. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's about it for this week, guys. Um, trying to think of anything new is coming up. Uh, I'll probably be doing my my Crown of Swords review sometimes next week. And I know that there have been a lot of people that support this channel that have been waiting for six months for me to uh, continue my Wheel of Time read. Just know that uh, I am enjoying it very much and I don't imagine it will be a long wait for Path of Daggers. I imagine I'll be picking that up uh, right after I finish Stormfront. Uh, so uh, Dresden Files, very excited. Wheel of Time, Iron Gold, very, very excited. I'm having a great time with this. So uh, guys, hit me in the comments. Let me know what you are up to. What are you guys watching? What are you guys reading? What are you guys listening to? Hey, I never talk about that. What are you guys listening to right now? Uh, so let's talk about it, guys. I'll talk to you there.